people are worried that someone else thinks they're smart or not. And I think it's really important to create content that is going to uh, reach a human that you hope to help or influence in some way. Welcome to Success Insider, a podcast for emerging leaders and anyone seeking motivation, inspiration, and business or career advancement. Brought to you by Success Magazine. Listen, learn, grow. It's an extrovert's world out there, but that doesn't mean introverts can't thrive. Josh and Shelby discuss their introvert personality traits and how hosting this podcast has helped them. Shelby catches Chris Brogan for a quick chat about how introverts can promote themselves as a brand via social media without making them uncomfortable. And we share five tips for introverts to survive in an extrovert office. And now our hosts, Shelby Skirhawk and Josh Ellis. This episode is sponsored by Alt-MBA. Are you looking to draw a bigger box for yourself? Do you want to level up and make a bigger impact? Seth Godin's Alt-MBA Workshop, a leadership and management intensive, is designed to help you do just that. It's the kindling to fuel that fire in your belly and help you satisfy that longing for more in life and in business. Four times a year, this intensive four-week workshop brings together two groups of carefully curated leaders from a wide range of industries and areas of expertise so that you are surrounded by people at the top of their fields, looking to support each other to become stronger and better. There are no lectures, no videos. It's rolling up your sleeves and working in groups with people who are equally in it to win it. Challenging, yes, but our friends at Seth Godin's Alt-MBA believe that the rewards are worth it. Ask any of their alumni. While most online courses barely approach a 7% completion rate, the Alt-MBA has an astonishing 96% completion rate. The alumni say they'd do it all over again in a heartbeat. The working world has changed. With the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities to help you level up. If you're looking for ways to have a bigger impact, the Alt-MBA could help you get there. They're now accepting applications for the fall and summer sessions. To find out more, visit altmba.com slash success insider. For special consideration, mention this podcast in your application and tell them success sent you. Shelby. Hi, Shelby. It's me, Josh. Hello and welcome to Success Insider. Hello? Uh, this is this is Josh, right? <coughs> uh, <coughs> all right. I'm back. All right. Testing out some new things. In the flesh. Think how much time I could save by not actually doing the talking myself. Right. You could outsource that to Siri who or man Siri there. Yes. Who uh and think how much better this podcast would be if it was co-hosted <laughs> by Stephen Hawking instead of me. Right, right. Oh, Shelby. Oh, Josh. I know that you're having a rough day. Yeah, a little bit. I saw your tweet earlier. It's it's not that I'm having a rough day. I'm just, I, yeah. At Shelby Skirhawk tweets, ever have one of those days when wearing pants and talking to people is too much to ask? Good thing I'm reporting a podcast in an hour and a half. Yeah. Shelby. <laughs> I, I forced myself out. Forced myself out of my, my little shell. And, and into and, your pants. And, and into pants, although I'm legging, so it's, you know, half. <laughs> you, uh, you say you forced yourself out of a shell. Yes. And that's sort of in line with what we're talking about today because we're talking about introversion, right? Yep. And uh, we've been doing this here podcast for a while now, over a year coming up on like a year and a quarter or something like that. So um, I would say that you're getting more comfortable, but how do you feel about it? I, I, I think that, um, you know, we're both self-defined uh, introverts, right? right? I think I'm feeling a lot more comfortable by it. I'm actually mm -hmm. surprised how I am feeling about it. But, you know, there's just, there are those days that whether I'm super busy and so I'm just kind of plowing through and, and, not five words come out of my mouth that day mm -hmm. or uh and yeah i'm just feeling very insular there's there's those days but i've been able to kind of step out of that when it comes podcast time and do talking and wear pantsing yeah well the show must go on and so you you better get those pants on and buckle up <laughs> because we, we got to do it anyway um for me you know this was never 
a real challenge because I've done podcasts before and even even like live radio, basically. Right. And it's never bothered me because, look, it's still just the three of us sitting here. You, me, and uh, Sweet Mariana, our producer. Right. There may be tens of thousands of people listening, but don't see them. So um, recently we had the Success Live event and I spoke. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but... Um, stepping up there in front of a huge group, like almost 1,500 people in person, that was freaky yeah. for me. Like that was when my introvert came out. Um, but I think I think I did okay. And, you know, introverts- I think you did great, by the way. Oh, thank you. I should chime in there and say, yes, you did great. Okay. You didn't look nervous. You looked like you had command of the stage. You did great. Did you see the video? I have not watched it yet. My neck have. turned all red. Does it really? Uh, you could tell I was nervous because oh, like the sides of my neck are like flush. <laughs> it's very weird. Uh. Oh, good thing that thing's not getting posted. All right. So uh, despite a change in acceptance of introverts and in, in the workplace and stuff like that, and people are understanding them better and are having the realization that they can be real powerhouses, right? And and a lot of truly great thinkers are or were introverts. Um, the fact still remains that given all of our social media platforms, it's still more of an extrovert's world than an introvert's one, right? Right. And that's that's something that I talked to Chris Brogan about. I ran into him at um, social media conference a while back and and we talked about this very idea of being a introverted person in an outwardly social environment especially when if you're a brand you know kind of the brand you and the you economy mm -hmm. um you're kind of expected to put yourself out there but but what do you do when you don't feel like it when you hesitate to post anything cuz you you just you don't feel like opening yourself up to that so Chris had some great stuff to say. Chris, of course, is the CEO of Owner Media Group, provides strategy and skills for the modern business. He's a sought-after speaker and New York Times bestselling author. Chris considers himself an introvert. So it was interesting to uh, you know get his take on how introverts, especially those whose brand is them, can handle social media without stepping too far out of their comfort zone. All right. I want to hear what he had to say. All right, so I'm catching up with Chris Brogan at Social Media Marketing World, and we're talking about connectivity and how we can balance our need to connect and be social with others with our own needs and our own need to be insular, need to be introverted sometimes. So Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, Shelby, my pleasure. So good to see you again. So we were just having a conversation about connectivity in this world, how we are so connected so many ways, but how do we balance that with some introvert nature, some introvert tendencies where sometimes you don't want to be connected. Sometimes you, you do just want to kind of go insular. Tell me if you've had any experience in trying to, trying to balance those two worlds. One of my jobs is to be a professional speaker. And so people find it a little strange and disconcerting that I am an introvert and they think it's a little weird that I can go on stage and say weird things and funny things and whatever. And I can come here and hug and kiss a whole lot of people in a row. And but that I'm actually a pretty private and quiet person. People are being asked, executives and successful people are being asked to go out and make lots of photos on Instagram, make lots of video. Everyone's being told you have to have a YouTube channel now. And I don't disagree with any of that. But as an introverted person, the way I look at it is there's, there's a kind of way you can hide in person and hide in plain sight. You can create photos and whatever when you feel like creating those that keep you going in between. When you go to live events, especially if you're an introverted person, it's really important to sort of schedule some space in between. So you might have to wander off to a Starbucks way far away from the event or and get a beverage or something because you need to let a moment or two go without someone talking to you or without you having to answer some way that you really don't really mean. That's one thing. The other thing you can do at a live event, what I find is that when I'm feeling more introverted is when I ask more questions of the other person. And I know that seems a little strange because wouldn't it be promoting conversation? But what I'm really doing is it's a magic trick of turning it around to make them the star so I can listen and pay attention to them for a minute. And that, I think, is something useful to do at a live event. Something I know that I've personally struggled with is that you talk about authenticity, that you actually you have to be yourself. But when you are yourself, it can feel like it's too much, 
that having to having to post on Instagram, having to to share on Twitter, whether or not you still use it or not. Uh, have you found any strategies for kind of balancing that when you really do feel like you don't want to talk to anybody, but you know that if you're a blogger, if you're a content creator, you have to be constantly sharing yourself. So one small correction, I never ever use the word authenticity because I think it's a strange thing to worry about. Yeah. It's almost like when people say, uh, you know you're not insane if you worry that you're insane. First off, I don't think that's true. I think insane people, probably some of them know they are. But I think that with authenticity, uh, the goal is never that. The goal is to be true to what you believe. The goal is to try to do your best to communicate your position in a way that benefits the business that you serve and all that. But in a way that stays honest to who you are. And I, sometimes people will tell me, oh, well, I work somewhere where that's not okay. That's your choice. You've chosen to work at a place where they don't value your perspective. Now, let me be also really clear. <laughs> There's a lot of companies that don't care what you think. You just have to do the job. And I think that's also true. When you go out to create this kind of media for yourself, when you're making Instagram photos and all that, you're not really talking to someone. You're just putting data out onto the screen that someone can or can't look at. Now, you might say, I don't ever want to take a photo of my kids. Great. Don't take a photo of your kids. Take a photo of your food. I don't want people to see what I eat. Great. Take a photo of a flower. It doesn't matter. Uh, some people want to know what you're interested in. Some people's Instagrams are uh, the figurines they collect. They collect hummels or something. I don't know what I'm saying when I say that. <laughs> but someone is. And I think that... You know, maybe you like certain bands and you could show, you know, just tracks that you listen to at the gym or something. There's always something you can share with someone that you don't mind them knowing that may or may not in a strange way connect way down the road. I'm into Batman and uh, I point out to people that, for instance, I have Batman socks on today. <laughs> And so people who think superheroes are fun go, oh, that's great. Or what did you think of this movie? I have had money-making conversations that started from some random photo someone saw on Instagram. So speaking of photos, something that I know you have a strong opinion about is stock photos. When you see that generic laughing handshake office scene, we all know, <laughs> we all know what those look like. So you start to talk about, you know, take a picture of your food, take a picture of maybe something in your house. So tell me how that is, how you can apply some of these, these pictures of just everyday things to your blog posts and make them better visuals. What a visual is supposed to do for a blog post is in any way intrigue our eye to then go into the text. I mean, that's the whole purpose of putting a photo on a blog post. As it turns out, your photo doesn't have to match the post. It doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is connect in some way. So what I've been doing recently is taking weird photos of my head. And so um, I did one of me sort of looking bored up at the sky and I wrote a post saying, uh, dear corporate bloggers, your blog is horrible or something like that. And so you see my face and you go, oh, that must be him expressing his disdain. Now, I totally posed that photo. I clearly wasn't in the moment feeling <laughs> disdainful, but it was visually appealing enough for someone to go, I wonder what he's upset about. It, humans love this, right? We love to try to read an expression and then go into it. And so in writing, because you're not there in person, this is a great way to get someone to pay attention. When we use corporate stock photos, what happens is the opposite of that feeling. We feel no emotion. We feel a negative emotion. We say, oh, this person thinks it's okay to serve me this stock photo. They don't even value my time. There's a lot of mental baggage that comes with receiving stock photos that turn off a bunch of mental switches in us to pay more attention. I want nothing more than I want your attention when I'm writing a blog post because I want you to look at my material and say, oh, this is somebody I should work with. And so I make sure that something is so unique in some way that you go, oh, we should look at this. So what are some other tips that you can use to be more personal in your post and make your post uh, more valuable and more appealing to people? One is to, to speak as if you're talking to someone you actually care about instead of writing a book report for some professor. I find that a lot of people are worried that someone else thinks they're smart or not. And I think it's really important to create content that is going to uh, reach a human that you hope to help or influence in some way. 
And I promise you that pretty much zero people in a corporation are sitting around going, I really hope this person is an articulate speaker of the English language. They're saying, I hope I get something that I can learn from. And so that's one. Another is uh, really value people's time and attention. Don't ask them what chocolate bar they are. Give them some sense of this is what we can do to make business happen here. Or there's some value or here's what I know that will make your life better. And I promise you, this is going to save you time, make you money, get you better relationships or whatever. And from that, then guide them to what you do for business. So Chris, I shouldn't ask you what kind of candy bar you'd be. <laughs> what candy bar I'd like to eat versus what I'd be. If I, I guess what I'd be would be something like a whatchamacallit. <laughs> what a horrible candy bar, right? It's a bunch of things, you know, that's what I am. I'm not really definably simple. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for your time. Really, really appreciate all of your insights. My utter pleasure. Thanks for having me, Shelby. Hey, Josh. Uh, pretty excited here. Yeah. Yep. I got two new freelance gigs starting soon, and that's happened ever since I signed up for FreshBooks. It's really made things a lot easier. Money. <laughs> See, I told you it was a great cloud accounting software for getting you organized and making your work life much simpler. Yep, you were right. I should have known by now to listen to you about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You're very, very wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Seriously, though, I mean, it's been very helpful setting up new clients in FreshBooks. It really just took a few clicks. And what's great is that I can track my time, which is very important. So I can know what jobs I've worked on and, and, and I can see all of it right there in FreshBooks. So when I'm ready to invoice, it auto populates all of my hours and into the invoice and, and it looks all professional and, and then I'm ready to go and get money. Yeah, I think that's been a big thing for me, not having to type all my hours out into Excel spreadsheet, which I'm terrible at. Uh, and, and then it add everything up and transfer it to the invoice. But with FreshBooks, bam, it's right there for you, like you said. And of course, sending the invoice is just as simple since you can do it from FreshBooks. Yeah, I think everybody in the you economy, like we talk about here on the podcast, really does need something like FreshBooks. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't use it. And they are in luck because FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to all Success Insider listeners. Claiming the trial is just as simple as using FreshBooks. Just go to freshbooks.com slash insider and enter success insider in the how did you hear about us section. Go sign up now. Great pointers for handling life as an introvert while attending conferences and particularly some best practices with social media as an introvert. Josh, are there times when you hesitate to post things about yourself on, on social media because you, you just feel like you're kind of giving too much of yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that people who are cognizant of the brand that is themselves, like you and Chris talked about, or if you work for a company like you and I do, you have to watch what you say out there. And, you know, we are the most minimal of public figures that you can <laughs> be right. because people are not really recognizing us uh, walking down the street. But still, you have to be sort of protective of people you work with and your friends and your family. And, you, you know, you don't want to let just anybody into that inner sanctum of, of privacy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe we're talking about two separate things, though, because that's one, a great point about not censoring yourself, but mm -hmm. just realizing that the those innermost thoughts are being put out in public. So you have to make sure that, you know, it'd be OK if, uh, you know, if it came up at work. But also, I guess I'm more thinking of those times where, you really are just feeling in your shell and you don't feel like sharing, you know, a, a, an article that you just wrote or or anything like that, even though, you know, you should. And probably in some other time, you'll be more more out there with a little bit of self-promotion. But just right now, you're just not feeling it. I mean, I, I ask, I guess, from experience, because I do feel that where I'm like, there's stuff that goes live that. I need to go out and push and, and, you know, share with people and I should be proud of whatever work I've, I've created, but I, yeah, I just don't feel like sharing it then. I, I, I don't want those, those yeah. eyes on me. Um, well, you may be asking the wrong person here because I checked today and I've got like 22,000 tweets <laughs> um, and most of them are, you know, stupid, like here's a sandwich I'm eating right. or, or um, the Rangers need to you know, pull this relief picture out and put this one in mm -hmm. or 
you know, a, a retweet of, of a nice success insider promotional that you tweeted. Exactly. <laughs> um, that counts as a tweet, I think. Um, but, you know, something like on Facebook, I post far less on Facebook yeah. because I actually do know those people. Right. Uh, and so I'm, I guess, introverted that I don't want to be to people that I know. I, I don't want to be some, uh, you know, lunatic that posts crazy things on Facebook all the time. And you all know the people that I'm talking about. All right. Well, of course, um, social media and, and these types of things aren't the only places that introverts need to develop some some coping skills, offices, especially, you know, one like ours, where it's an open office environment, it can really be intimidating for for true introverts. Yep. So I pulled up an article from Jennifer Purdy on success.com that gives five tips for introverts to survive in an extrovert office. And I'm glad I found these because it's definitely something I know I struggle with sometimes. So let's give them the tips. The first tip is to offer to host meetings. Groups of people often bring fear to the forefront uh, for introverts like you and me, Sherbo. But if we have control of the meeting by hosting it, then we can set the agenda and keep it moving at our pace and kind of control it. And that makes all the difference. Plus, it, there's an added bonus to that, that it helps demonstrate some of your leadership qualities to the team. And, and that's something that, especially if you're an introvert, you don't tend to speak up a lot. That's something that introverts are really missing out on. Yeah, uh, exactly. So what's uh, the second tip? Jennifer says, join a speakers group. Organizations such as Toastmasters provide opportunities to practice public speaking in a controlled and friendly environment. Like practicing your speech to your dog or your kids at home, there's benefits to having this practice in front of others. And of course, it's a little known fact, or I think it's a well-known fact to me because I cite this all the time, but that introverts often make the best public speakers because they put so much extra practice time into their presentation that they may not normally. If it's a routine thing for an extrovert to, to go out there and speak. They may think they've got it. They don't have to put in as much time, but often you'll see that the introverts are the ones that really create a better presentation. Yeah. I, I, um, it really helped me in, in when I was speaking to have those nerves about it and, and like re actually practice and, um, record myself and listen to myself right. and, and just kind of like almost be able to recite the speech as if it was the, Declaration of Independence that I had to to uh, memorize when I was in middle school. And did something. you memorize it completely? The speech? Yeah. No, not entirely, but I pretty much knew where it was going and knew how to hit the hit the high notes, you know, because uh, I knew that they were right around the corner. Right. Okay, so that worked for me, uh, but there's more tips. Uh, the next tip for introverts is to prepare yourself. Be ready to go with a response when you are presented with confrontation. Uh, there's back and forth anytime you're presenting at work and, and, and or in a meeting. So um, just preparation. Um, you know, when when uh, you're faced with confrontation, you got to know what to say to defuse the situation. And as hard as it might feel, you know, a, a response like that can just show, uh, if you say it right, that you value the person's opinion and that you're prepared. You are on even footing if you can volley back really quickly and you know even something like I understand you're upset and thank you for bringing this to my attention will just demonstrate that that you're on the level you know well right and it also because we want that time to reflect a little bit and thinking on your feet I mean it's something we can do but we would prefer to have some time to process it right um, having that just ready to go you know that's that's a great point let me um, let me think about that and let me get back to you like just having that right off the tip of your tongue. That way you don't have to sit there and feel a little bit deer in headlights. When in doubt, buy time. Right. <laughs> what else? All right. Next tip is to establish a workflow process with your coworkers. So introverts, they typically work better in more regulated workplaces. Well, I don't know if I would, I'd agree with that, but I think introverts work better in whatever makes them feel comfortable. Uh, but the tip is to schedule meetings with your coworkers who like to micromanage things so they don't get out of control. So you can block off a few hours in your calendar each day to show that, you know, that, that those those hours are taken, that those are kind of introverted. I hate this word because I'm saying it too many times, but, you know, those are those are your internal thinking hours. 
It gives you the, the necessary time to recharge and concentrate on what you're doing, but you still have those other times during the day where those coworkers can come to you and you're expecting this, this sit down, this face-to-face time. And let's talk about what being an introvert really is. And maybe we should have done this earlier. It doesn't mean that you're scared of people or you're right. freaked out anytime you have to talk to a stranger or something like that. It just means that... You know, generally, you you are more energized by time alone and, and being in big groups or networking and stuff like that can wear you down. So we uh, introverts just like quiet time, alone time. It could come from any number of factors. For me, I was an only child, so I'm used to it. Right. Um, I, I just think that you have to know yourself, right, and, and know how to best kind of regulate your mood and your energy. Um, so that you can be on when you need to be. Well, and that's a huge point of knowing yourself because if you weren't familiar with some of the characteristics of introverts versus extroverts, you may actually think that, you know what, there's something wrong with me. I'm antisocial. I, I, why don't I feel comfortable talking to other people as much as you know the guy next to me who really thrives on that? Yeah. They can talk through things and, and think through things kind of through talking and and through speaking and on their feet, whereas you feel like you need to go insular a little bit to figure stuff out. I I mean, I used to think like, why can't I think on my feet like this person? It's just that I I just think differently. I need that time by myself to think of it before I can, you know, volley back and forth and have an educated conversation. Well, you know, sometimes I'm just jealous of people who are extroverts in their ability to just carry on the conversation. I, a lot of times, will lose interest in a conversation after a minute. Meanwhile, Greg Luther comes over and he'll (laughs) talk to Christian and Amy, who sit right in front of me, for an hour and a half. Right. And that's why it's good to have a nice pair in an office of, like, noise-canceling headphones. Yes. um, Because there's a lot of socialization that goes on in front of you. And also to have your own little space, right? Uh, Comforting cubicle or office if you are so lucky and add some soft lighting like a small lamp or some favorite family photos and or if you're like us and you work in an open office environment then then if you're able to and you've got a laptop or something um, then it's nice to be able to have a little place to escape right like a favorite nook or cranny away from those like main traffic areas in the office to keep you from feeling overwhelmed. And if that's the environment that you get work done in best, then you got to seek it out. Right. And I think that's something that our company has been great about. Uh, We have our wireless, you know, internet, so we don't have, we don't have to be tethered to our desk. And I know you found a particular spot on the other side of the building that uh, is your little hideaway. Yeah. Josh's room. Um, Is that the couch room? (laughs) Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's my room. If we were renaming it. Uh, Paige and I already had claimed that as the therapy room. So, um, we're going to have to have some discussions well, about the naming rights here. Paige has the milking room or whatever <laughs> now when she comes back room. that she can use. Yeah. Nursing room. That's what it's called. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I, I'm as a writer or when I'm editing, it's hard to do it for me upstairs if I really want to focus. Um, right. So I escape and and hopefully no one finds me or barges in and, and I can just while away the day on my own. That's that's how I like it. Okay, so he's downstairs. If you go down the hallway to the left and it's the far end with the uh, with the room that's got the whiteboards and the purple couches. Shut up, Shelby. <laughs> Well, that about does it for this episode. But of course, we can't wrap up until we've pulled a new letter from our uh, old you at success.com mailbag. So, Shibby, you want to do the honors? Happy to, Josh. This one comes from Scott Stoltz in Norwood, Massachusetts, who you met at our Success Live event, Josh. Oh, yeah. And he's the founder and innovator of Teaching to Lead. Scott shares his personal story of taking the leap and building his library of personal growth. He says, I love studying and learning about leadership, developing my own leadership skills. And while there's so many great tools and resources for us out there, I feel there's not enough information and focus on how we could better lead ourselves first. Hmm. I think it's critical that we all be the best leaders of ourselves that we possibly can, regardless of whether we're in a formal position of leadership. 
He continues, I want to help change this and help people put a focus back on these critical life skills because I truly believe that if we do, then all areas of our lives, including health, family, and career, will improve and benefit, which in the long run will benefit all of society. Absolutely. Ah, it's awesome to hear from Scott. Uh, and I have to say, uh, Sherbert, that I love hearing stories from any listener, any reader. They are out there every day making it happen, being great self-leaders. That's in a way what this show is all about. Yeah. So um, I have deep respect for that. And it's uh, so great that we can share a little bit of these great things that they do. It was awesome to meet you at Success Live, Scott. And it's awesome to hear from you in the mailbag. Absolutely. So thank you for, uh, for giving all of these um, inspiring words because they really are an inspiration for others. Yep. And for us. So that's it from We Podcasting Introverts. Hope that you grabbed a few good tips for f- surviving in a social world, even if being out in the thick of things isn't quite your cup of tea. Until next week, I'm Josh. And I'm Shelby. Peace out. Oh, yeah. It's it's awful. It's freaky. I look like, I look like a chameleon or something. <laughs>